Hey, what's up everybody? Uh, I'm back with a little short clip of something I, I got going on that it, it's about photo etch. Uh, if you guys have never messed with it before, uh, have never bought it for any of your models, I got a little something to show you. Before I get into that though, I want to say something. Uh, I want to, like I said before, I want to thank everybody that, that's been watching my videos and if you know I just finished up the Battlestar Galactica um, I on this particular one at the end of it I didn't put no music with the pictures like I did with the Arizona that stuff of messing with music you know you gotta try and find something that ain't copyrighted and then I did find one guy that I like his music but then you gotta send him a letter asking him for permission to use it and it's just it, to me it's it's I got enough going on without having to worry about all that, going through all that stuff. Uh, my son was down here, and we probably took 150 or 160 pictures of that model. And I had to go through all those, pick out the ones I liked the best, and uh, and that, and that's the way I did it. Uh, and I, I messed around and with the with the Photoshop a little bit. I got a program where I was able to, to uh, take out the display base and the uh, metal support rod. So if you looked at the pictures, you'll notice there's, it just looks like it's floating in there. So I messed with that a little bit, you know, and, and this video work and, and, and all this camera stuff, it just eats up so much time. I mean, that was a weekend just trying to take pictures and then another couple days going through them and then another day of, of downloading stuff it, it takes for about a 25 minute video it's at least almost two hours to download it on YouTube so I hope you enjoyed it I, I was really pleased with the pictures the way they turned out but that's not why I'm here uh, if you guys are kinda new to this like I am and you've never messed with photo etch before I got a little something here that you're gonna probably like and uh, it gives you an opportunity to see what it's like to mess with this stuff. And uh, I'll show you what I got here. Let me get the camera turned around and uh, show you what I've been messing with. Okay, so here it is. Uh, this is Photo Etch. And it's made by this company here. Let me get this in lens. I'm pretty well zoomed in here so you can see this stuff. Alright, and I'll put the link uh, to this thing on the, uh, on the bottom of the screen. Let me see if I get it right. Down here. And uh, I noticed I was over at a hobby store the other day, and they're selling this stuff over at uh, Hobby Lobby. No, not Hobby Lobby. Hobby Town. That's where it was. And they've got a bunch of them. And uh, if you get on their website, you'll see they've got a lot of this uh, and this stuff's pretty nice now if you never messed with photo etch before this will give you the opportunity to see what's involved in it um, you'll have to do some bending some uh, trimming off of the frets and uh, things like that so it'll give you an opportunity to see what's involved in photo etch before you go spend in forty or fifty sixty dollars to buy photo etch for a model. Now this particular type of photo etch is a little bit thicker than the uh, the other type of photo etch. So let me get the camera reset and I'll, I'll show you the comparison between the two. Okay here's photo etch that I bought for the uh, Arizona model. And you can see this is pretty flimsy stuff. It's real thin and it's made out of brass now for this uh, stuff here I don't know what this is made out of you know it, it's it could be brass with a coating on it I'm not sure but if I had to guess I would say that this stuff here is twice as the thickness of this and I don't know what we're talking nanometers but this is pretty solid stuff and uh, it's pretty nice to work with. There's no glue involved in it at all. All the parts go together.
by having these little tabs that stick out and you take a pair of uh, needle nose and just twist the tab and that locks the parts together. Uh, you probably could glue it together if you wanted to but if you're just looking for something to, then to uh, play with to see if you uh, like this photo etch stuff or not this is the way to go. Now like I said these are these are pretty cute. <laughs> yeah, that's the only word I got for them. That's the Tower Bridge over in London. All right, now they measure oh about five and a half inches long, and uh, I think that's what, if my metric system is right, about fourteen centimeters, I think. And there's the Titanic. Like I said, you know, this, this is uh, something to mess with if you've never messed with Photo Etch before. Uh, they're not that expensive. This one's got a price tag on it, the Titanic here, of $9.95. So for about $10, you can find out if uh, you want to mess with Photo Etch or not. You don't need a lot of stuff to, to do this. Uh, basically, all I was using was a little roller and a razor blade to bend them. Now, they've got real good uh, bend lines, if you want to call it, on them. So it's real simple to bend. It's, it's not difficult at all. Uh, matter of fact, a lot of this stuff on the Titanic, I was just bending with my fingers. Now, you will need... What I said here is a little roller and uh, a razor blade I got just to bend them. You also will need, like I said, a pair of tweezers because you'll have them little tabs sticking out and you just grab a hold of it and give it about a quarter turn and that's it. It's locked in. You'll, uh, of course, you're going to need your knife to cut them off of these frets. Now, with this particular one, I found it a little bit easier to turn it over and cut them off. And they don't have a lot of uh, connection points. Uh, one of the largest pieces, I think, only had maybe four connection points, three or four. Most of them I only got two. Uh, so you'll need a knife for that. Then you're going to need a, a file, a little jeweler's file. I was using these little sanding sticks, but this stuff being so thick, it, it just eats these up. So I was using my little jeweler's file, if you've got any sharp edges. A pair of tweezers, because some of these parts are very small. And, especially on this Titanic here, I had to uh, take a flat piece and make it round for the funnels. Okay, so I was using a paintbrush, just bend it around. I've got a whole bunch of different types of paintbrushes. Just find the right size and bend it around a paintbrush. So that's all you need. You, you, you don't need a lot of stuff to do this. Like I said, there's no glue. Okay, <clears throat> hold on, hold on. I uh, forgot to show you guys something very important you're going to need <clears throat> for cutting this photo etch. <clears throat> now, what I have here in front of me is the end of a monthly calendar. It ran out and it's a nice little thick piece of cardboard. This is usually what I work on. You can see I also have a cutting mat. Now, you do not want to cut your photo etch on this stuff. Even though this cutting mat feels good and solid, there, it has too much give. And if you take this photo etch Here's that piece of photo etch from the Arizona. If you were to take and try and cut on this, there's too much give here in this, in either this piece of cardboard or this cutting mat. And if you're cutting small pieces like these little people up here, there's little bitty people there, you run the risk of when you're pushing down, pushing too hard and getting into this piece of cardboard and bending the hell out of this this photo etch. You'll probably destroy your little part. You, you, it, it'll just bend it up. So you want something hard underneath here. 
So what I use, what I did is I went out to Lowe's or whatever you got in your country where you can get a piece of sample tile. Now I bought this piece here. It's white. The reason I, I like this piece is because it gives me some contrast here so I can see what I'm doing. Obviously you don't want a piece of brown tile for a piece of brown photo etch or you'll have trouble seeing your lines, your cut lines. Uh, I believe this is about an 8 by 8 inch piece of tile. Don't cost much, less than a buck over at the store. And you can get all kinds of sizes. A lot of guys will use a piece of glass. Uh, now I have heard some guys say they don't like using this because it is too hard and you really don't have any give in it when you're trying to push down on them little uh, connection points you don't have any give and you really have to uh, hope that it just snaps or, or it, it will come off it, it's simple it, it really works easy but they don't like it because without having any give sometimes when you go to cut your last piece off of that fret that part might just take off on you it'll go ping and it's gone it disappeared now for some of you people in the mother countries figure out what disappeared means I'm just messing with you because I still have trouble when I watch some of you guys and you call them decals when they're decals so anyway get something hard. Uh, the only problem what I've seen some of these guys using is they'll use a, a small cutting mat like you would use in the kitchen. It's made out of plastic. You would use it for cutting up vegetables or something. Small piece of plastic. It's very hard. I've seen another guy use a sample piece of hardwood flooring. And those two have, even though they're pretty hard, have just a small amount of give in them which might make it a little bit easier to cut these pieces off but you wind up gouging that piece of wood or piece of plastic you'll get cut marks in it sometimes if you push hard enough you'll get a, a deep groove in it or a gouge and if you happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time when you're cutting another piece off well you're gonna wind up bending that so that's why I use this. Might be a little bit harder according to what they say. I don't know. I haven't tried the other way. But I like this and it works good for me. So let me bring this up and show you what I'm talking about here. Let me turn my camera around so I can see what I'm doing here. All right, here's them little people, and there's my thumb. Now you can see how small they are. If I was to try and cut that on that cutting mat, I would just bend the hell out of them. I would probably destroy them. Yeah, you can get them back level and smooth again, but why mess with it? Now here's a bigger piece, a little bit easier to see. Here's your connection points right here. There's one there, one there and two down on the bottom. That's what you got to cut off of the fret. You got to cut them little connection points. Now here's your bend lines. This particular piece right here has four. There's one, two, three, four bend lines. And they're really easy, easy to see that, you know, when you see something like that, you know that's where that part's got to bend. And it, it's real simple to bend. Now, once you cut these off, you might have a little burr there. So what I do is I take a piece of plier or a pair of pliers, and I'll hold this piece of photo etch in that pliers as close to that edge as I can get them, and then I'll file that little burr off. So that's what you're dealing with. Like I said. I use this piece of tile. I've had good results with it. No problem. I'll put my finger on this piece when I'm cutting. So when I get to the last cut, I don't have to worry about this thing taking off and, and 
and the carpet monster getting it. So remember that. Keep your feet on, finger on it. Your feet, yeah, right. Keep your finger on it, and when you cut it off, you don't have to worry about losing it. Okay? And another good little thing is when you get these little small parts, and they are so small you can't pick them up, I've got a little toothpick here. Let me turn the camera around again. I got a little toothpick here with some tack on it. And that will pick up them little parts. Here's a, here's a little washer. Picks them right up. All right. So that's how you deal with this stuff. You get the hang of it after a while, but you don't want to be screwing around. That's why I say build one of them little models first for about 10 bucks. You ain't out no money if you mess it up. This here was about $35, $40. So build yourself one of these little models first and you'll see if you want to mess with this stuff. Okay, back with the show. And uh, I think what I'm going to do is, I, I, I did these two, and I'll probably go over and get me another one. Because they are kind of cute, and they are fun. I did this one in about a day. This was a difficult one, this Titanic, trying to get these pieces back here to meet up and things. But it, they're, they're real simple, uh, real easy to put together, and... It's a fun little project if you've never messed with Photo Etch before and you're, and you're looking to give it a try. I really like these little things. I think they're, they're pretty sharp. So uh, do yourself a favor. Run over to Hobby Store or somewhere wherever you can find them or get on that website. And they've got everything. I've seen planes, World War II planes, biplanes, tanks. Uh, they got, I think, an old Model T or something. They've got all kinds of stuff. So, like I said, I'll probably go over and get me another one. Give me something to do in between building models. Keeps me busy. Alright. Well, thanks for watching. It was just a little filler. Just be uh, while I'm between models. Of course, of course, I'm back. <laughs> I can never end a video. I didn't show you the directions. And this is how they come. Big sheet. It's all on one side. At least for these two it was. Pretty straightforward. Except they do not show you where to bend stuff and which way to bend it. That you got to figure out on your own. But what's nice about this is they show you each fret and where all the different part numbers are at. But it's, uh, the directions are pretty straightforward. Nothing to them. Nice, like I said, nice little model. Okay, I know that that is the end. Okay, listen, if ever I say that's it, the end, don't pay any attention to me, because I always can come up with something else to throw on here. All right, I showed you these two. Well, since I made this video, which was about a week ago, I went out and bought two more. I got them off of Amazon. So I want to show you these other two. Move these over out of the way. All right, now I can't remember what they call this, the Hanjai Castle or something like that. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, it's a castle over in uh, Japan, built back in the 1400s or something like that. I'm sure everybody's probably seen pictures of it. Let me bring it up a little closer for you. All right, that was a challenge, but it... it is pretty neat. Alright, now let me show you something else 
everybody will recognize. They just came out with this uh, series, I should say. I think there's three or four in this series, and I only got one. A little R2-D2. And I tell you what, the detail on this stuff is, is phenomenal. <coughs> oh, so let me zoom in on them for you here a little bit. I turn my lens around. See if we can get zoomed in. Up, oh, too much. Right there. See that detail in that stuff? Now these I did a little differently. And I'll show you here in a minute. Instead of taking the tabs and taking a pair of uh, needle nose and twisting them, if any of the tabs were on the outside of the model, I bent them over. Let me see if I can show you this here. Let me find my pointer. I can get this close enough with keep it in focus. Where is it at? Right here. Get some light on it. Alright, there's some tabs. Let me find them first. If it's showing up in the light, there's some tabs that came from the inside to the out. And instead of taking a pair of needle nose and twisting them and leaving a little sharp point stick out, I just took a little, uh, my little knife really my little cutting knife exacto knife and very carefully bent them over so if you can see them right there they're bent over but they came out pretty nice so now I got four of them Let me back out a little bit there we go and everybody seems to like little R2-D2 they think he is the best and once again you know on Amazon I think that was about eight bucks I think that one was about twelve that will challenge you right there all these roof pieces have to be put on different floors I think there's two or three floors you have to put in there but like I said it's a nice little uh, little model to put together to give you that experience of dealing with this photo etch and they are pretty nice I like them they got some more that I'm looking to get uh, I think I'm going to start me a little collection of them so let's zoom in for you one more time The, the detail work on these, you know, it's like most photo etch, you know, they, they do a lot of good detail on it. Like I said, you can get just about anything you want. Get on that website that I put on, on the beginning. And uh, like I said, they just came out with this uh, Star Wars series. Uh, there's a Millennium Falcon and uh, I don't know what you call that big tall walking horse that's <laughs> what I call it but uh, I think there's two or th about three of them I think already they got in the Star Wars series alright I'm not gonna say that's it because I don't know uh, I do want to show you something I, I'm telling you this right now I got something to show you uh, when I was going through this video I got something to add to it something I got in the mail so hang in there there's a little bit more coming no no that's it Th this is the end I swear uh, I had some more to show you but uh, th the video is running too long and uh, it, it would have been over a half hour so I'm gonna cut it short here I'll, sh I'll show you the other part some other time in another video um, 
But I want to mention something. If you guys were paying attention in one of the little clips, you would have seen a pack of cigarettes sitting on my workbench. They are not mine. They belong to my dog. Yeah, he's a smoker. We've been trying to break him of it. We even bought him some little patches, but they don't seem to work because they keep getting stuck to his fur. So we're trying to break him of it. But uh, that's it. I, I'll see you in the next one.